your forecast first from KARK4, your weather authority. A brutally hot afternoon across the state of Arkansas, turning into a very, very hot evening. Another brutally hot day on the way for tomorrow as temperatures easily eclipse the 100 degree mark. Once again, a lot of places nearing the 105 to 110 mark tomorrow afternoon. As far as the heat advisory is concerned, it is in effect for most of Arkansas through Wednesday. Extreme heat warnings are in effect for northwest and southeast Arkansas through at least tomorrow. For Little Rock tomorrow, we are expecting a muggy start at 78 degrees, 101 by lunchtime, and for the drive home, 105 degrees. KARK 4 News at 10 starts now. Now, from the station you count on for local news that matters, your home for the 2012 Summer Olympics. This is KARK 4 News at 10. Good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Bob Clawson. Hi, everyone. I'm Jessica Dean. Well, get ready for another round. Record heat expected to cook the natural state again tomorrow. It's on its way. All we can do is wait for it to get here. Record-breaking triple-digit temperatures today. High 111 degrees in Little Rock. Keith Monahan has been taking a look at this throughout the day. I mean, you actually earlier today when we talked, you said, you know, we might get there. Next time I saw him in the newsroom, we surpassed it. We, we easily did 111 degrees this afternoon, easily breaking the record for the day, which was 108 set back in 1986. Keeping in mind the hottest temperature ever observed in Little Rock was just last August the 3rd, August the 3rd of 2011, when it reached 114, so a very, very close call today. The 12th record high we've seen so far this summer, the 20th 100 degree or higher day we have seen so far this summer as well. As far as rainfall concerned, we are in pretty rough shape right now. Much of the state of Arkansas in an extreme or exceptional drought. The wildfire danger is very high to extreme across much of central and western Arkansas, still at, at the moderate level, I should say the high level, for northeast Arkansas. And unfortunately, the heat will continue, as will the very dry weather. Your complete forecast in just a few minutes. All right, Keith, thanks very much. And that fire weather watch out there Keith's been talking about could have been contributing factor to the fire running wild in Garland County in your hot springs. Take a look at this from Sky 4. The fire burned at Maliante, according to the Arkansas Forestry Commission. Six fire departments responded to the fire, which burned through 120 acres. From Sky 4, you actually see the attack from the fire from the air there. There was voluntary evacuation, but now we've learned the fire is contained at this hour. There were more than wildfires burning today. Firefighters in Sherwood say one home there a complete loss this evening. There were no injuries and fire crews quickly put that fire out. But then the scene took what some call a strange turn. The fire department said they knew what started the fire, but couldn't comment. KERK Force Josh Berry has more on a story you'll only see on KERK. I can't see that. Lewis Austin Sr. stands by while fire crews rummage through what's left of his son's home. The homeowner, Lewis Austin Jr., was out of town when fires ripped through his house in Sherwood. The Sherwood Fire Department says it was a total loss. It was a big fire. Crews say they got a hold of it quickly, but once they did, Sherwood police took over, bordering the property with crime tape. Neighbors did say they were a bit uneasy about the possible origins of the fire. Is there any kind of suspicion that you have with this? I heard what I thought was a um, small explosion of pop, but it was right after the delivery truck left. But Austin Sr. doesn't see any reason why someone would have intentionally done something like this. Uh, I don't think Lewis got no in it. I don't think. Not that I know anything about it. In most fires we've covered, crews will usually give an early estimate as to what they think may have started the fire. This time, however, they didn't. Nor would they comment on why police took over and crime tape surrounded the home. That's, this isn't something that we that we do in all scenarios. I can't call my own ass. He no. added, "It's under investigation." The family of the homeowner says they were kept in the dark about most of it, even as they stood behind crime tape, as they say police searched through the homeowner's safe and what were once locked cars. I haven't told us anything. I mean, I was sitting here waiting, ticket, maybe hoping somebody come in and tell us something, but uh. I'm about to say nothing. In Sherwood, Josh Berry, KARK 4 News. Josh, thanks. And that crime ta tape is no longer up, but we did speak with the fire department. They say it's still under investigation by the police department, and they cannot comment on a cause. Well, we all know this year's fire danger has been extremely high, but here's some numbers to put it all into perspective for you. According to the Arkansas Forestry Commission, we've had 228 fires in the state so far this year. 
That means we've already surpassed the 215 fires we saw in all of 2011. And of course, we still have five months left in the year. New tonight at 10 o'clock, or I should say after the Olympics. New information about a man suspected of double murder in Little Rock and a stabbing in Memphis. And we spoke to a woman who says she once offered him a place to stay. Antonio Woodlow is behind bars in Memphis at this hour for a previous aggravated assault charge involving a former housemate at Memphis. The owner of the house spoke out today saying that she was surprised by the accusations that he killed his parents. Like I said, I'm surprised that his parents I never thought he did his parents like that, but not anybody else. It wouldn't have been nothing hard for me to believe. King did say in March, Whitlow attacked her with a box cutter during an argument with Anthony Banks, who also lived in the same rooming house. The same man Whitlow is facing aggravated assault charges for. Whitlow's bond is set at $50,000. No word on when he will be extradited back to Arkansas. Today, a Columbia County man accused of murdering a 74-year-old woman in her own home made his first court appearance. According to Columbia County prosecutors, 32-year-old Robert Harrison faces capital murder charges for the stabbing death of Glenda Stroman. Harrison was arrested after DNA taken from Stroman's Magnolia home matched Harrison's. He remains in the Columbia County Jail without bond. He'll be arraigned on Thursday. Cabot Police trying to reunite stolen property with its rightful owners in the Greystone area. New for you tonight. A call from a watchful neighbor lands two suspects in handcuffs for a Sunday night car break-in spree, one of them a juvenile. Kirk at 4 is Marcy Manley with more on this. Hey, Marcy. Hi, Bob. Well, folks in Cabot, specifically the Greystone area, may want to check their cars to make sure nothing's missing. That's coming after Cabot police discover a carload of loot they believe to be stolen. If you see something that looks suspicious, it probably is suspicious, so call the police. Greystone Neighborhood Watch Chairman Brad furlow has been urging neighbors to be wary of crime across the community. That's how criminals get caught, is someone sees something that looks kind of uh, out of place. It seems Sunday the message may have hit home. Sunday night about 11:30, we got a call of a vehicle driving suspiciously without headlights. Cabot police arresting 19 year old Ian Ross along with the juvenile accomplice for a string of car break ins after pulling over their car and finding a load of what's believed to be stolen loot. Quite a bit of property was recovered. We are still going through all the property trying to get it back to their rightful owner. There's no official word on how much it all might be worth or even how many cars were hit. Throughout the evening last or last night all the way in today we've had non-stop calls but police say those that were have one thing in common all the vehicles that we know of so far have been unlocked police say many of these car breaking crimes are ones of opportunity a crook will look in a car see if they see anything they want check the door handle and if it's open they simply grab and go they usually just open the doors if it opens they go in. If not, they go on to the next vehicle. Police urging those who live in the area to check their cars to make sure nothing's missing. If you have something in your car that's a value to you, then it's probably a value to a criminal. And the Greystone Neighborhood Watch wants folks to start taking valuables inside their homes, but continue to be on the lookout. Police say it's also a good idea to keep up with serial numbers and pictures of valuable items like electronics. That way, if they do get stolen, they can be more easily matched up when they're recovered. Back to you. All right, Marcy, thanks very much. New details tonight about an internal investigation of a state trooper after he pulls over a former ASU running back, Michael Dyer. you got a career ahead of you. You're being a total dumbass right now. A canine not seen in the dash cam video here. The March 10th traffic stop was apparently used to sniff out marijuana in Dyer's vehicle. It's protocol for that to be documented, but a state police spokesperson says that documentation was never done. The video also appears to show the trooper letting Dyer off with a ticket, not charging anyone for drugs or a gun allegedly found in the car as well. The story we'll keep you updated on. Now, from KARK4, your weather authority, Chief Meteorologist Keith Monahan. It certainly was a hot afternoon, and even for these kids over at the Pulaski Academy, waiting till 7 o'clock this evening didn't do a whole lot of good. At 7 o'clock, the temperature in Little Rock was still 105 degrees. At least the sun wasn't beating down on these guys this afternoon and early this evening. But it will be tomorrow. We are expecting another hot day tomorrow, but let's review what happened today. 111, the high temperature in Little Rock today. 
broke the record for the date, 108, set back in 1986. It's also the third highest temperature ever observed in the city of Little Rock since record keeping began back in the 1870s. 112 was the hottest temperature in the state today at Searcy. Folks in Searcy, you tied with Winfield, Kansas for the second hottest place in the country. The hottest place in the country today, Death Valley, California, coming in at 120. And as a Facebook fan said, I bet those folks in Searcy are happy to take silver in this event. Nobody wanted to see 120 today. Look at these temperatures at this hour. It's 93 degrees in Little Rock. 93, incidentally, is our average high for this time of year. When you factor in the 64 dew point, it feels like 95. Winds are southwest at 7, the barometer currently rising. Do you have a little disturbance moving through northeastern parts of Arkansas with a couple of isolated showers? Folks along the northeastern border and the border with Missouri may see an isolated shower the next day or two. That ridge of high pressure nudging in to the state of Arkansas. As we head through the next 24 hours, it looks like tomorrow the smallest chance of a shower well off to our north along the Missouri state line or the Missouri boot heel. Looks like by Wednesday that ridge of high pressure weakens just a little bit. Might see an isolated shower Wednesday, perhaps an isolated shower on Friday, but overall most folks are going to stay dry and hot for the next seven days. Temperatures 105 to 110 Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms Friday. That ridge finally begins to weaken by the weekend into early next week. And it's sad to say that upper 90s will be cooler temperatures by Monday. Small rain chances in the forecast, but dangerously hot the next couple of days. Yeah. Drink plenty of fluids if you have to be outside. Check on those folks that may be more susceptible to the high, high temperatures. And also the pets. Keep and the pets, pets, too. And make sure you don't leave anything in the car that's, that's alive. That's, that's right. for sure. That's, oh, that's absolutely true. true. Yes. You know, you've, you've got to, I mean, you say that, you know, kind of ingest, but it's so important. That's right. Kids and pets. pets the yeah. hot car temperatures become dangerously deadly hot. Yeah. All right, Keith, thanks very okay. much. And don't forget, straight ahead, we're going to reveal tonight's lucky iPad winner. We have Friday's winner, Michael Kimbrell of Volonia. He came and picked up that prize today. So that's right. So it's happening. We have many iPads to give away. <laughs> that's right. Coming up, you're still waiting on your chance to hit the jackpot. Your odds are getting better. We're going to tell you about that. Find out what the Arkansas State Lottery Commission is doing to improve your chances. I tried to encourage my patients to live for their full potential, and then I kind of took a step back and looked at myself and realized I wasn't taking my own advice. We're going to bring you the inspiring story of a woman who pushes herself every day despite not having something many of us probably take for granted. We're going to have more on how she pushes past barriers. That's next. And take a look at tonight's Decades of Dollars drawing numbers. Remember, you can always sign up for lottery text alerts at our website, ArkansasMatters.com. There are your numbers for tonight. This is KARK 4 News.